Sometimes when I'm looking for a new pattern to try tying or fishing, I'll just grab an old book and start flipping through it. And earlier today, I found some inspiration in Kenneth Bay's American Fly Tires Handbook published in 1979. Now this has never been one of my go-to fly tying books. It's just not that easy to tie out of, but you never know when you can find some inspiration or some cool technique in some obscure book or magazine. And what I found in this one was a pretty unique way of imitating a quill bodied fly. And if you've tied a lot of quill body flies, you'll know that you really can't tie any big patterns with it. The quills usually just aren't that long. But this technique uses thread. It's a dark brown, a tan, and a white. And if you marry them together and just wrap it up the body, you get a decent imitation of a quill body. Now I'm gonna show you this technique on a nymph and it's just a generic mayfly, but tied a little bigger, it'd be a decent stonefly. And there's nothing that says you couldn't use the same technique on a dry fly. And one thing I didn't do that you might wanna consider is put a little bit of varnish or UV resin on the body. That would certainly make it more durable. So up to you if you think you need it. So this pattern, a pretty simple little fly, but it uses a really cool technique to have in our bag of tricks. So there it is in the vise, just kind of a generic quill body, mayfly, even a stonefly nymph. Now I've got a couple of mistakes of the one you see right there. This is the first one I tied. I think that head's a little bit too big. Maybe the thorax is too short. We'll see if we can fix that on this one. And I would say sizes for this, anywhere as big as a 10 down to a 16. I'm gonna go with a 10 because it'll make it just a little bit easier to see. If I was tying a lot of these to fish, I'd probably do 12s and 14s. And I'm gonna use white thread and I'm stepping it up to a 140 denier, but before you start wrapping it on, pull about 10 inches off and cut it and pull it to the side. Then go ahead and wrap your white thread down to the start of the bend. Now the tail I'm using for this is peccary. If you don't have this or avelina or wild boar, just any stiff hairs, stiff fibers. Now since these are pretty big coarse fibers, it can be a challenge to get them laid on top here and splayed out. So I'm just gonna do a couple of loose wraps and then try to finagle them and put a couple wraps in between them to keep them separated. Okay, that should do it. Now I'm just gonna leave these here, help build up my underbody. Now here comes the unique part of this fly. Take some brown, dark brown and tan thread right here, and I'm using a thicker, this is a 140, and about eight or nine inches, and I'm just gonna catch both of these strands in up at the front, and then wrap them in back here toward the tail. Now that's kind of half of our fake quill body. Remember at the beginning, we pulled out about 10 inches or so of this white thread. I'm gonna fold it over and catch it in. So now I've got two strands of white. I'm gonna catch this in back here to the brown and tan. Okay, before I wrap those up, I'm gonna spend a few extra wraps just to bulk up the center of this fly. And that's why I'm using a 140 denier thread. Okay, I think that's bulky enough. So take these four strands right here and then try to keep the brown and tan ones toward the back, if you can. I don't think I'm gonna be able to because I've got them all mangled up with my tail right there. How'd I do that? I don't know. But okay, I think we fixed it. So I've got these th four strands right here, the brown and the tan one and the trailing side and then Trying to do the white one up front and just after you get that first wrap or so you might be able to get them laid out and you know what my brown one's on the front but we're going to just live with it but go ahead and wrap these up all the way up to the front of your fly a few extra wraps to lock this in and there you go, you know, from more than five or 10 feet away, looks like a quill body. Now I am gonna put a wing case on this. So any natural feather, slip of a feather from a duck, turkey, goose, whatever, I think a natural or a light color is gonna look best here. This is a duck and I'm gonna just catch it in right on top. And I want the first, maybe third of the fly to be a thorax and wing case. So we'll take that back just a little bit. Smooth this out right here, and then leave our thread to the back, put a good bit of wax on it. Now I'm gonna dub this with a, a cream fox, 
Anything natural like this is gonna work fine, I think. A rabbit would do well. And let's put maybe a three, three and a half inch noodle. Remember the one at the beginning of the video that thorax was just a little bit short, so we'll try to fix that on this one. Okay, I think that's gonna be just fine right there. Now for the front hackle, which is just gonna be the legs, any kind of upland game bird, this is a Hungarian partridge, but a grouse would be fine in a light brown or a natural color. Let's create a little notch, catch it in, right up here at the front of this thorax. And since this is a thicker thread, it's not gonna take too many wraps to really lock this in. Couple more right there. I'm gonna have to snip this little piece. And I'm gonna need to take my hackle pliers. I'm not putting many wraps on this. Maybe one, one and a half. And the, even then that might put more legs than we want, but that's fine. We can certainly trim them before we're done. And I want them coming off the sides and the bottom. We can try to do that with thread wraps or we can use our wing case to position them, but I'll take a couple extra right here. Now let's fold this wing case over. Try to part these to the side right here. I'm gonna spin my thread clockwise, just cord it up so that I can get a stronger bite right there on that duck. So now that should be caught in pretty well. Okay, let's finish this head and then take care of our cleanup. And what I might do on these, you know, I like the long buggy legs, but I don't necessarily want them coming all the way around. So I'm gonna just trim some of the ones off the bottom here. And there we go. Drop a head cement and this thing's good to go. Maybe put some head cement on that wing case if you want to harden it up, but I think it's a, a fishable fly just like this. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.